What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be another retro review of Chasing... Mm -mm, nope, we're not chasing nothing. Ooh, wrong show. My bad. <laughs> I was just... Anyway, sorry. Noah's Ark, Season 1, Episode um, 3. But Chasing Dallas slash Atlanta, those are some good shows on YouTube. Check them out. Anyway, um... So, because this is a retro review, because we're coming up on the anniversary, which is the reason why myself and LTD even started talking about the show again. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. We've always talked about the show, but why we decided to start reviewing the show and stuff. So, while we're doing that, I will add a few little antidotes as we're doing it. First of all, I want to say, you guys, this show was 15 years ago. So, if I get a few things wrong, please forgive me. Charge it to my head and not my heart. This show took place in the 1990s. If I said a different era, I truly apologize. I didn't mean anything by it. Um, I honestly don't remember what episode I came in with Noah's Ark. I know that I didn't start from the beginning. Um, I used to love watching Logo because Logo played the Golden Girl. And I knew it was an LGBTQIA platform and I always thought that was cool I don't know <laughs> my 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 um really good friend of mine I call him in jest I call him my drag mother James Colwell he's a youtuber he um he says that I'm just an old drag queen because I love not to sound in a patronizing way I love you know um gay shows and stuff like that and I was watching RuPaul's Drag Race and I don't remember what came first so let me say that but I will say, no, Noah's Ark must have come first because we're in season 12. So Noah's Ark must have been first. And I guess that's, anyway, that's how I found Noah's Ark. Um, just watching the Golden Girls, I think. And I, I don't know if it came on after it or what have you. Um, and this was before everybody played the Golden Girls. Like, you couldn't find the Golden Girls everywhere like you can now. And um, I don't remember what episode I came in on, but I do remember this being one of my favorite episodes that we've been talking about. So I've already rambled for two minutes. I'm sorry for those of you that just want me to get to the review, but I just thought I would add a few little ins and outs and here's and there's. Um, but anyway, so we start this episode off. We see Noah and Wade, honey. They are they are coming out of the bedroom. It's clearly like a Saturday or a Sunday morning. And, you know, Noah's like, listen, I am starving. And Wade was like, yeah, I got something you can eat. And Noah was like, mm-mm, it is your turn. And he was like, well, I don't even know how to do that. Like, Noah was like, I'll teach you. I know. I'll teach you. <laughs> so they start getting in the getting to do. And next thing you know, here comes ARC walking in the door, honey. Because um they do a monthly brunch. And I guess they rotate houses and it was Noah's day. And he had totally forgotten, honey. He was so caught up in the rapture. He had totally forgotten that it was his day, child. So of course they walk in the door and no, uh, um, Wade is doing some things that he don't want them to know he's doing, and he um um is immediately embarrassed, runs in the bedroom. Noah has to go in there and smooth it over and be like, listen, my bad. I forgot they was coming through. He was like, why do they have a key? He was like, we got a key to everybody's house. And listen, if you have a good close of, girl, of, of, of Judy's like that, that's the, that is just what it is. Like, I got keys on my key right now to houses that no longer exist. I don't even know where they go to no more. Because we all do that. You know what I'm saying? Even in today's world, we all have each other keys to each other's house or whatever. So, um, he convinces Wade to come and have, you know, have brunch with them. And so, they're sitting around talking about what's going on. And Alex is talking about how this whole cyber sex thing has gotten out of control. How... Trey is now bringing home sex toys. And he was like, listen, I just want to have regular sex again. Like, this was cute. It was fun for a minute. But, like, I'm just kind of over it. And Trey seems to be digging deeper and deeper. Um, <sighs> I don't know, Alex. I'm like, Alex, y'all been together for seven years. He's just trying something new, something different. Like, if it ain't hurting nobody and it ain't involving the third party, boy, go for it. It's all good. So what, he want to bring a few toys into the bad, the bedroom? So what if he want to have a little bit of cyber sex, honey? It's all gravy, baby. But anyway, so then we have, um, then um, Ricky is talking about trying to find somebody for the store, how the old dude that he was getting it in with, he was like, he's gone on tour with somebody and how he really wants to just have a 
strictly professional situation. So he's going to hire somebody that he's, you know, not going to be trying to get with him. And he, we, they show him doing the interviews. And in the interview, he's throwing these double entendres. And he's being very sexually seductive. And everybody that took the bait, that kind of threw it back at him, that kind of, you know, was letting him know that they was with it. He didn't get him the job. He gave the job to the person, Raphael, who was like, listen, because he said something about, do you have a problem um, working under me? And Raphael was like, Raphael was like, if you mean working under you as in respecting, you know, like you giving me your, your expertise and, you know, mentoring me, then sure. But anything other than that, I just don't mix business with pleasure. And so, of course, Ricky gave him the job because on the surface, that's what Ricky wants. But immediately, immediately, when the dude walked out the room, Ricky was like, mm, I love a challenge. So you just, you just can't, huh? Ricky, you just can't fucking help yourself, honey. So then, um, we see Chance talking about how he went to have lunch with, um, no, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Rewind, 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 rewind. Somehow we skipped ahead. Before I, look, anyway. So then there was this moment where Ricky and Noah flirty. And they were flirty. But Ricky is a flirt. And it wasn't a big deal to Noah. But of course, Wade is sitting there and Wade wasn't feeling it. And Wade got up. He had an attitude. He was like, he told, you know, Noah, that, you know, meet me in the bedroom. Like, we got to have. And he told him, and Noah was like, listen. Ain't nothing going on between me and Ricky. Ricky is a flirt. Don't don't worry about it. Don't make a big deal about it. You know, um, anyway, been there, done that. And so, of course, then, of course, Wade was like, huh? Been there, done that. And, again, I, I see it from Wade's point of view. Like, you in a room full of people who are friends with your man, one seem they seem to be a little too touchy-feely, and then you find out that something went down with them sexually. So Wade rolled out. Wade was like, yeah, I'm not I'm not feeling this. And I'll be honest, I was with you on this one, Wade. Like, I mean, there's going to be times when I ain't with Wade. But on this one, I'm with Wade. I'm with him on this one. And so anyway, later on, so that was kind of where the brunch ended. So then later on, we see Wade asking um, Noah what went down. Like, what, what was the deal? And Wade was like, I mean, Noah was like, listen, it wasn't even that deep. I met Ricky at the club. We, you know, we got flirty, flirty. We went to the back room to try to get it in. I prematurely, you know, got too excited too soon in my pants. And it turned into a moment where at that point we instantly just became friends. Like I basically, I knew I wasn't in Ricky's league and I wasn't even trying to go there with Ricky. Like that's what it was. So Wade was just like, mm, I, and the biggest thing with Wade is he's just not trying to let on how, deep his feelings are for Noah. So he just keeps saying, I mean, I ain't mad. I mean, I'm not jealous. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, when you really are mad, you really are jealous and it is that big of a deal. But okay. Then we see Chance is showing up for, you know, he's bringing lunch to Eddie at work. Eddie's out to lunch. His secretary was like, he was like, well, let me just go ahead and drop it off for him. I think he's bringing him dessert or something, some cheesecake or something. He goes into... Um, he goes into Eddie's um, office. He's writing a note for him, Gary Lee the Food, and a reminder pops up on, well, it was back then. If y'all don't, y'all remember, again, this is taking it back into the 90s, honey. Um, I am Instant Messenger on AOL, and you would, you know, you could chat with people. Same thing with Yahoo Messenger. Um, and it's sort of like the same as like Google Hangouts and stuff like that now. Um, but a, a reminder popped up. And it was from like Thug Life 74, something like that. And talking about see you tonight at seven. So Chance immediately goes to his tribe and they're having lunch and they're trying to tell him, listen, it's not a big deal. Somebody's screen name doesn't necessarily doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that they're cheating. You know, and then they start talking about how all of their screen names are something real crazy and sexual, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's always about that. Um, and that's when Noah actually had the conversation with Wade. And so, um, Chance was just like, you know, you could tell he wasn't really convinced, but he was like, all right, then, you know, whatever. Now, back at the store, Ricky and Raphael are having this, you know, perfectly professional relationship. And there's another person in the store, it looks like a designer, and, um, she's giving, um, um, 
you know, Noah some of her clothing and stuff like that. And it looks like Raphael and her are flirting. And so, of course, immediately Ricky, and I, I believe she's um, tra transgender, um, and immediately Ricky is like, what? Like, so I want to say her name was Peaches. I didn't write her name down. Sorry, y'all. I want to say he was, so he immediately was like, so wait a minute, what? Raphael is in the Peaches, but not me, not this, you know? And that was like the whole thing with Ricky. And, you know, Noah was like, it's not that serious. Like, everybody doesn't have to be in love with Ricky. Like, everybody don't have to be in love with Ricky. So Noah is telling Ricky, listen, can you kind of keep down the touchy-feely stuff in front of Wade? You know, he's just not comfortable with it. And, you know, I told him it ain't that, it's not that serious. It's not a whole lot going on. But at the end of the day, he's my man and I want to respect how he feels. And Ricky is like, whatever. Like, you know, you know, Ricky ain't feeling that. And of course, immediately while Noah is tickling, I mean, Ricky is tickling Noah, who come walking in the door is Wade. So that was the worst time for Wade to come walking in the door. But Noah tells Wade, listen, I asked him to cut down, you know, the touchy-feely stuff because you, you didn't really appreciate it. Like, I did talk to him about it. You just happened to walk in at the wrong time. Um, now, back over to Eddie and Chance's house. Eddie is on his way to a retirement dinner. Retirement dinner. And Chance is stuck with, with Kenya, honey. Well, I shouldn't say stuck with. That's not nice. They're in a relationship. He has Kenya for the night. Um, and, of course, Chance is asking him the questions that you ask when you know or you feel like somebody ain't going where they say they're going. Well, he said it was a retirement. He said, well, who, who's retiring again? What's her name? He talking about some Agnes. After a long pause, right? He had to come up with that. Chance was like, hey, he's like, yeah, you, you never met her. I mean, she's crotchety and everything, but she cool. She cool. You know, I'm just going to go pay, you know, just go and be, be, you know, do the, do the right thing or whatever. And Chance was just like, mm, okay. And you knew in that moment, Chance was going to investigate. Chance wasn't about to sit in that house. I said, now, I don't know what he about to do with Kenya, honey, but he about to head on out the house. Now, Chance calls, um, Chance calls Alex. Now, Alex is in the middle of getting ready to have a moment with Al, uh, with Trey. Trey to bought home a whole outfit this time, honey. And Alex, they got all these sex toys on the bed. Trey to bought home an outfit, told Alex to put it on. And he calls um, Chance and tells Chance, he said, listen, um, I took Kenya to the babysitter. I need to know. I need, like, I really need to know what, what the deal what the deal is with Eddie. Like, I, I, I need it. And Alex was like, Basically, Alex was like, well, girl, where are you right now? And he was like, outside your apartment. So, of course, Alex gets up. And what's funny is Alex didn't go by himself, honey. He took Trey. So, now you got... Then, then of course, y'all know how the train is. Y'all know how they do. So, then um, Alex calls Ricky or Noah, one of the two, honey. And, you know, it was like, mount up. Here come the posse, honey. He come through with that caravan. So, now you got Trey, Chance, Ricky, Noah, and Wade. All, did I miss somebody? I feel like I missed somebody. Anyway, all up in the damn caravan, honey. And of course, who's on the back seat of the caravan? The damn Wade, Noah, Ricky sandwich, okay? Because of course, Noah is in the middle. Now, of course, Ricky is doing what he's doing the whole night. He is finding a way to irritate the fuck out of Wade. He don't like Wade, he ain't feeling Wade, and he, don't, and he just think that shit is not going to end well between Wade and Noah. He also peeped earlier how Wade, like, Noah and Wade were holding hands, and, like, immediately Noah jumped back. I mean, Wade jumped back when he saw Ricky roll up, and I'm like, why you jump back? You know he know that y'all together. But anyway, they go heading over there. They get to the address where Thug Nificent, I don't know what the boy name is, Thug whatever, and while all, listen, it was just a comedic moment. Wow. All of them climb out the minivan, and they are all walking over to the house. I'm like, I don't know what y'all think y'all sneaking up on, but if the two of them had been so caught up in what they were doing, ain't no way in the world that y'all would have snuck up on nobody. But I remember the first time I was watching this episode, and all I was saying was, please don't let it be real. Please don't let it be real. Please don't let it be real. That's, that's all I was thinking. And baby, Chance looked in that window and he saw Mr. Thug Nificent on top of Eddie. Child, my heart broke for Chance. Because let me tell you why my heart broke for Chance in that moment. My heart broke for Chance in that moment because I was like, why would you do this to this man? Why would you have this man move out of his apartment? And they keep saying that they're married, but I, 
and y'all correct me in the comments, El Teddy, somebody get me together in the comments. Was it a legal marriage at that point, or was it just they were committed and they were calling themselves a married couple? I don't know. Just correct me in the comments, politely. Correct me in the comments. But why would you do that to that man? If you knew you weren't ready to be monogamous, if you knew you weren't ready for what for what all of that entailed, you had that man move out of his apartment, move into your house, become daddy to your daughter, so you could be running around here with the magnificent? I said, uh-uh. So, of course, everybody is walking back to the car, and every, everybody has an opinion. Alex is like, you need to roll up in there. You need to bust them open. You need to, you know, you need to confront them. And everybody, Trey is like, listen, if he ain't ready to do it, he ain't ready to do it. But, of course, everybody has an opinion. Chance gets in that car, and you just see that he has zoned out. He has zoned out. And the rest of them are standing in the street still arguing and talking about, and, of course, Ricky talking about something I told you. So, like, everybody has an opinion. And you know how you had that moment where you don't hear, it's everybody, it's like everybody's talking is like off in the wind. Like it sounds muffled. You don't really hear nothing nobody's saying. I feel like that's what happened to Chance in that moment. Chance started that engine and they couldn't get in that car fast enough, honey. Chance put that car in drive and Chance ran that minivan right through that damn house. Again, the first time I saw this episode, I was like, ah! Baby, Trey was able to talk the guy into not pressing charges. He was like, but listen, because he's only 21. This is his parents' house. They are out of town. He said, if we leave right now, they'll let them write, you know, they'll write it up as a hit and run because he don't want his family to know that he is gay. He is on the DL, but we got to get up out of here now. And miraculously, there was nothing wrong with the damn minivan. I mean, the minivan stood up, right? It was like a tank. Baby, they got out of there so quick. And, of course, um, here come Eddie trying to say he's sorry. Chance ain't here. They pulled off. And later on that night, Wade and Noah are back at the house. And, you know, they all on the phone talking about Chance. Where is he going to stay? And everybody was like, listen, Chance knows he needs somewhere to stay. He can come over here. Because he, I forgot to say that. He had finally turned the damn keys over to his apartment. And I was like, that made it even worse. Like, he had literally just given his keys to his landlord that day. Um, and, um, the last thing we see is we hear somebody knocking on the door. When they open up the door, it's Chance standing there with a suitcase in his hand crying, honey. I fell for Chance in that moment. This video ran real long. I apologize, y'all. I, I do better. Talk to y'all later. Peace.